You're listening to the Presidential Experience Podcast, the place where we chronicle man's search for meaning over money. I'm your host, Kene Corder, National Certified Counselor and Clinical Hypnotherapist specializing in financial therapy for high achievers. As a former Morgan Stanley Financial Advisor, I realized that high achievers needed help with more than just the numbers. And I bring a unique set of skills to my private practice as I guide CEOs and high achievers on how to manage their stress so they can enjoy their success. I want to bring some of that to you here. So each week, we'll start a discussion addressing one of the top stressors for high achievers. You've built a stellar resume. Now it's time for you to build a stellar life. Your hard work brought you money. Now it's time to turn that money into meaning here on the Presidential Experience Podcast. Hey there, my CEOs, my prospers. Welcome to this episode where we are going to talk about managing your stress, enjoying success, and we're going to talk about the meaning of life or having a life of meaning. I think that's the way I want to say that. During this episode, we're going to talk about what it's not and what it is. Now, in the upcoming weeks, we're going to really get into money because April is Financial Awareness Month. It's actually called Financial Literacy, but people who listen to this are already financial literate. But I do want to bring some more awareness to our finances. We're going to talk about how to earn, grow, protect, gift, and enjoy your money. All of those, because that's the money cycle. We're also going to talk about how to sell your business without selling your soul. Yeah, business succession. We'll talk about how to become your own bank because you have this money. And and a lot of times when you have money, you're going to use other people's money and you should. But we also want to show you some ideas of how you can use your money and other people's money at the same time. It's it's really cool. We'll talk about it later, but I just want you to see what's coming up and then get ready for what's about to happen now. So what's now? That's a statement we'd like to say here at Presidential Lifestyle, because people are always talking about what's next and that's stressful. So I am going to encourage you to Focus on what's now. And this is one way that you can keep or reduce the stress. And I was going to say keep your stress down. I prefer to say reduce your stress. And why I prefer to say that is because I want you to be able to visualize what that looks like. This is part of hypnotherapy. One of the things we do in hypnotherapy is really help you visualize ways to manage yourself. Now, because my CEOs are a little older, I'm going to say, imagine a knob. (laughs) Because when I do this with younger people, when I'm speaking and I'm speaking in a room full of millennials and nothing has knobs anymore, but you remember when you had a stereo and it had a knob on it, especially that big one that usually controlled the volume. Yes. Visualize that. See that stereo system. See the speakers even but really focus on that knob and imagine that knob controls your stress level and you can just visualize yourself turning that knob down. And later in the years, that knob even had like a digital readout of the numbers. And let's say it went to a hundred. And then as you turned it down, it went to 99 and 98, 97, then down to 80 then 70, even further to 60 and 50, and 40, 30, 20, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good. You've turned your stress down just like that. Now, I don't know about you, but I actually feel just a little bit better in this moment. And honestly, when I woke up this morning, I was slightly stressed because I'm dealing with a death in the family and rearranging the schedule and flying to Chicago. And, you know, there's just a lot happening right now. Dealing with business 
and life at the same time is it's a lot. And so I often have to turn my stress knob down. So what I teach you is also what I do. And sometimes what I need to learn. The things that I teach you the most are the things that I need to learn the most. Um, and some things I have down. I mean, like 80% of what I teach you, I have down. It's so easy for me to, at this point because I've been doing it for so long. But there's, there's still that 20% that I am constantly on a daily working on. That's part of what we're going to talk about here today. Getting to know yourself, getting to know your numbers, really looking at your daily activity and some healing that you might need to do. So let's get into it. What does it mean to have a life of meaning? And the reason why I ask you that question is because this is a big part of managing your stress. If you can give meaning to the things that you're doing, Boy, will you manage your stress? I think you'll get it more if I tell you this story. And if you heard the story before, just listen again or fast forward. So I started my career in a psychiatric hospital. And one of the things that happens in a hospital period, but also in a psychiatric hospital, is that there's a lot of paperwork a lot of paperwork. And you might have heard me say it before, but paperwork isn't my thing. I don't like paperwork. We run a digital company. Uh, a lot of what we're tech enabled. So a lot of what we do is we utilize technology. So me, the CEO, doesn't have to have that much paperwork, which is one of the ways I manage my stress. Well, at this hospital, there were probably about 12 sheets of paper that needed to be filled out on the patient by the therapist. And so, I mean, there was other papers. There was a whole file already that, you know, their intake and just that coming through the triage, there was already a lot of paperwork. And there were 12 other pieces that I was going to add to this file. Some of them were redundant and they were irritating. The patients hated them. And I would start out by saying, I am going to ask you, some questions so that we can complete your paperwork. Some of the questions might sound redundant. We, you may have answered them before and you might even answer them several times with me, but I need this for your file. So please bear with me. If at any point it gets too painful, just let me know and we can stop. So yes, every single time I got ready to interview a patient, I would say something like that. And they would still get irritated, even though I told them it was going to be repetitive and <laughs> irritated. And them getting irritated made me more irritated because I didn't want to do all this paperwork anyway. Do you see where I'm going with this? I think you do. So what happened next? One day, at, towards the end of my internship, like after I had complained and complained every single day, after I stressed out, I'm telling you, I would sit in my car some days. I would get there like 10 or 15 minutes early because I really had to fix my attitude around working in this hospital and all of this paperwork. So I would get my mind right and then I'd go in. Well, one day towards the end of my internship, I worked in what was called the utilization unit. And in the utilization unit, that is the department that pays the bills, that gets the money from the insurance companies. And so I worked in this area and this particular day, I watched one of the ladies get on the phone with the insurance company. And I watched her go through that paperwork, all 12 of those pages. I heard the insurance company ask her questions. She would turn into the file and she would read the therapist notes verbatim. Patient states, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, wow. She would turn to other pages And she would say, huh, blah, 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 blah. Whatever they asked, she would get it from the file. Now, keep in mind, this lady never interacted with the patients. She only sat in the utilization office, never seeing any of the patients. So it was very important that that paperwork was complete and thorough and filled out with care. 
not with irritation. And when I saw that, it gave me meaning. Meaning in that paperwork. Now, I suggested that they add that earlier in the training so that therapists could understand how their paperwork affected the hospital, how it affected the world. Because let me tell you, if that paperwork is not completed properly, it means the insurance company is not going to pay. And if the insurance company doesn't pay, then that person who has that mental illness is out on the street. And if that mentally ill person is out on the street, we are not safe. They are not safe. And in that moment, I found meaning in that paperwork. Now, I'm not going to tell you I found meaning in all paperwork, (laughs) but in that paperwork, I did. And it really reduced my stress around that paperwork. I didn't even have to visualize the knob turning the stress down anymore. I just had to visualize that woman on the phone with the insurance company getting the bills paid. And I also visualized what happened if then she didn't have the right answers and she didn't get the bills paid. And that person had to get back on those streets, hurting people and hurting themselves. And that gave me meaning. So I bring that up because there may be some things in your life that you have to do. Your daily activity is important to your business and your personal life. So let's talk about number one. The first thing, because I said you can do this in three essential steps. And your daily activity is the first one I want to talk about. Now, your daily activity consists of your morning routine, your afternoon routine, your evening routine. And Somewhere in between is all the other stuff that governs your life, like checking email and filling out paperwork and having meetings and all of that stuff. And so if you have a clear morning, afternoon, and evening routine, you got to manage your stress. If you also have sleep in, in order, your nutrition in order and your physical activity. You know this already because we talk about this so much, especially if you're in the presidential experience club. If you're in the club, then you know this. Sleep is number one. You've got to get sleep and you can manage your stress with sleep. Nutrition, absolutely, because what you eat, you are what you eat and your stress is is triggered by what you eat. And then your physical activity kind of allows you to get some of that that negative energy out of you by doing some physical activity. And it could be as simple as walking. So I don't necessarily mean going to the gym because sometimes when I say physical activity, people hear, oh, the gym. Yeah, no, not necessarily. Yes, but not necessarily, not limited to the gym. And so sleep, nutrition, and physical activity are not the three things I want to talk about today. Those are Those are not even bonuses. Those are essentials because you already know them. Absolutely, those have to be in place. There's no negotiation on those. Get your sleep, nutrition, and physical activity in place. And I expect it to be a seven or above. If it's lower than that, even if at a seven, I'm I'm concerned about you. But if it's lower than that, I know that you are in danger of being stressed. If it's higher, eight, nine, 10, good job. So rate your sleep, nutrition, and physical activity, okay? And that's just a little field work, a little to-do that I'd like you to do, but that's not even the point of today's show. That is essential and you just got to do it. I'm going to add three other essentials though. Now, if you have any questions about that, go ahead and send us an email at podcast at presidentiallifestyle.com. All right. So moving on because... Daily activity. So starting with your morning. Morning should have a step-by-step process. Now, you've probably seen videos of me talking about my morning routine. Well, I'm going to recap it here. So I do appreciation, meditation, hydration, and activation. Now, this morning, I went through those very quickly because I have a small window of time because I took an extra day off yesterday because of 
the death in the family, it weighed a lot on me. So I took an extra day off. So that means today I have a little bit more work to do, which means I'm starting earlier than I usually do. So I had to condense my morning routine, but it didn't mean I didn't do my morning routine. It meant I condensed it. So what usually takes two hours, I did in one hour. Activation, just in case you want to know what that is, that could be, that could be working out. That could be, that's my physical activity usually, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes it might be listening to an audio book, watching an inspiring video. Um, it might even be a phone call with someone like my daughter or my mother, somebody who just like lights me up. So that's my activation. Your, your, it gets you going towards your why. So that's first. Your daily activity is your morning routine. Now, daily activity is just number one. And inside number one, you're going to look at these three things. I want to make sure that you understand all of the components that go into managing your stress. And so if I am being condescending, oh my gosh, please forgive me. I'm not trying to be. I just know that sometimes this stuff can be confusing and I don't want you to be confused. You know why? Because confusion is stressful. And if you are confused, you're not going to take action. So if I'm over explaining, I want you to give me some grace because while it might be easy and simple for you, it may be difficult for someone else. Does that make sense? Good. And we have compassion for each other in presidential experience. It's especially if you're part of the club. But even if you're not part of the club, if you're just listening, you're sort of part of the tribe, the family, you know? And so honor and respect and compassion is what we lead with. So where this might be irritating that I'm over, over explaining, I'm going to imagine that there are going to be some places where you might be confused. And so have compassion for your brothers and sisters who might be confused right now and let me over explain. Okay. Good. I'm so glad we had this conversation. So your morning routine, it could be like mine. You could make it whatever you want it to be. Mine is appreciation, meditation, hydration, activation. Activation is where I talk with somebody I love, or I listen to a podcast, audio book, or I work out. Hydration is I drink lemon water. Sometimes I drink lemon, parsley, and celery water. Um, and, and I usually drink at least 12 to 16 ounces. So, and that like kicks off my day. And then I, over, over the day, I want 75 ounces of water at least. And that is really important to managing your stress, making sure you hydrate. Before that, the meditation, I do 20 minutes of Vedic meditation, which means I use a mantra. I don't use any music, any chimes, anything like that. It's just me in the silence for 20 minutes. I manage the time on my own using a clock. I don't have a timer. So that's my meditation. And then appreciation. Appreciation, I just say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, over and over and over again until I get a feeling that is associated with that. I feel what thank you means to me. Okay. So that's your morning routine. <laughs> and that's just the beginning. And then go through your day, you know, let some stuff happen and it's going to chip away at all of that meditation and all that hydration and activation you did. You're going to get worn down and tired and you're going to need to pick me up. And that's where I do my midday meditation. And that's pretty much all I do. I take an hour and I have 30 minutes of that is 20 minutes of that is a second meditation. 10 minutes of that is me just, you know, resting, chilling, thinking maybe. And then I take lunch for 30 minutes and I don't multitask during that time. Now, every once in a while, I will take, have lunch and like make a phone call or write an email or something, but I try not to do that. I try to just take that one hour break and make it for me. And that is my afternoon routine. Half of it is eating. The other half is like meditation and recharge. I don't like to eat before my meditation because I don't want my body digesting while I'm trying to settle because digestion is work for your body. So meditate first and then eat. So that's my afternoon regimen or ritual. And then there's my evening. So I just started this. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to say that in the morning, I take my minerals. I take something called swish. Sealy by design, if you've heard earlier episodes back in January, we talked about um, a CBD and mineral that I use. It's called Sealy by design. You want to know more about it, you can go to sealybydesign.com slash presidential. 
but it's full of vitamin and minerals, 90 vitamins and minerals, and plus the CBD, and it has zero THC. So that's why I take it. And that's part of my morning routine is to do that right before I hydrate. Then evening, I take my omegas because I was forgetting to take my omegas and I would just like somehow didn't take them. And I think it was because the lemon and parsley water, there's citrus in it and the omegas, they just didn't interact well with that citrus in the water. And so I wouldn't take them right away in the morning and then I would just forget about them. So I added them into my night routine. And I did that talking with our wellness director, Amy, um, she and I were having a conversation. I'm like, I just don't understand why I can't get this right. And, and I share this with you because even after teaching this for so long and doing this for so many years, there's still this falter, you know, there's still a place where you can falter. You being an expert does not make you perfect. <laughs> Can I say that again? Being an expert does not make you perfect. So I talked to Amy, our wellness director, and we kind of talked it out and I moved it into the night to my evening routine and and it's working really well. So I take my omegas, that's my other vitamins and sometimes my probiotics in the nighttime. So that's my morning, afternoon, and evening routine. Your daily activity is super important to you getting through your day. I don't do a meditation at night before bed because meditation, the way that I do it, it kind of invigorates you and I don't want to be invigorated before bed. So I just do those two. And then right before bed, I turn off electronics. I don't watch a lot of TV. TV is not my thing, but if I am going to watch it, it's probably going to be at the end of the day, but I try to be done by 9 PM because I want to be in the bed by 10 PM. That is my routine. So 9 p.m. I'm turning stuff off, no computers. I do look at my phone because I usually like to look at my schedule for the next day before I go to bed. And I sometimes wear my blue light blocking glasses so that I can look at my phone without disturbing that melatonin that my body is producing. Now, I'm not one of those people who is counting my hours on my phone and trying to keep that low. That's not where I stress out. That doesn't stress me out. My phone doesn't stress me out. In fact, my phone makes me feel better because I can handle things and I feel like I can be away from my computer. My computer does make me feel like I'm at work, but my phone doesn't. Now, when I am with my loved ones, my daughter, my grandson, my parents, you know, if I'm, if I'm dating, my friends, I'm not on my phone. I'm giving them my full undivided attention. Now, if something happens, they know like, Hey, this, we got this crisis happening. So my phone might ring and I might need to take that call. Other than that, I'm fully with them. And I really like to do that in the night. And that might be a phone call because some of the people that I am dating don't live where I live. And so in that dating mode where eventually I'll be in an exclusive relationship again, but right now I am not. And so sometimes that might be a phone call. So being on my phone at night is not a problem for me. This part of my routine, sometimes I'm talking to the person that I am interested in the most is a way that I kind of mellow out, have a little laugh and get a little love at the end of the night, whether that's in person or over the phone, especially if I'm traveling, because I do travel quite often for my work. So that's the daily routine. And that's just number one. And I say just number one. I'm sorry. That probably made you a little stressed. That's number one. Awesome. Woohoo! Number one is done. You got it. Daily activity. Now, if that confused you in any way, I say, listen to it again. I even say, share this episode with someone else and then discuss it with them, what your morning routine would be. And if all else fails, you got us. You can reach out to Amy. You can reach out to me. So you you know, we do the private conversations. You can have one with me and talk about meaning of life and money and that stuff. Or you can speak with Amy, who's our wellness specialist. She is the director of our wellness department and she can talk directly with you. Tell you about how to do that at the end. All right. So moving on, number two, I really like this one and it is know your numbers. Now I have another story for you. When I was a financial advisor at Morgan Stanley. I once asked a colleague, 
how was his month? Now, the reason why I asked him that is because we worked on commission and we are paid by assets under management. So we try and get as much money in each month as we can at the end of the month, calculate it and it calculates our commission. So I was asking him, how was his month? And he replied, it was good, but it could always be better, right? There's always more money to be made. And I disagreed. I was like, "Hmm." so I replied, well, I don't think that's true for me. I don't see it like that. And he says, well, why not? And I said, well, I have my numbers. Like I have a number that I need to hit in order for me to feel peaceful. And when I hit that number, I'm at peace and I go do something meaningful. Like I focus on getting with my family or having some fun. And I don't let the end of the month stress me out. And he said, you do? Like it's a big question. You have a number and you stop? You stop yourself? How the heck do you stop yourself? How do you stop yourself from wanting more? And I got that. Like I understood that. And this was, remember, before I was doing this work with CEOs, this is how I was starting to understand that CEOs need to help with more than just the numbers. It was like this question on self-mastery, stress management, enjoying success. And he was one of the people that helped me notice that. There's another story about this same colleague that I tell sometimes about how he helped me see how people feel better around me. And so sometimes you, you find meaning in life by listening to what people say about you. Now that one is a bonus. That one is not part of the three that I'm going to give you today. Um, But he was a colleague that really helped me see deeper into myself and really having conversations with him is part of how I developed this work that I do. And so I just kind of said to him, you know, I give myself permission to be grateful for what I have. And I have a number. Now I'm grateful at every number, right? Even a dollar, a penny. If I if I find a penny on the street, I am grateful. Believe it or not, I am. I am so grateful. And and you can and my friends will tell you if I find a dime, I'm like, oh my gosh, ten days of good luck, right? I just like celebrate that dime that I just found or that nickel or that even that penny that I find. And my friends will tell you that I do that. I actually do that. And so if it's a thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars, I'm getting more grateful for it. Um, I I shouldn't, but I'm honest with you. I am more grateful for the hundred thousand than I am for the penny. I'm human. Goodness gracious, people. I'm not the Dalai Lama. So, so I I have gratitude at the end of the month when we hit our numbers. And I did this back when I was at Morgan Stanley. And I'm like, all right, yes, hit the number. And now I can go celebrate. And if I hit that number on the 20th, I don't rack myself, drive myself crazy trying to get more, get more, get more. I'll still work. Of course, I don't just take off, but I'm grateful when I hit that number and I'm good. I'm not trying to beat the next person. I'm not competing, trying to be number one because I am number one. Aha, aha. Did you get that? I put myself first, that it was how I was number one. When I am fighting to be number one, beat somebody else, when my focus is on being the number one advisor, then I put Morgan Stanley first. Then I put those other advisors first. I put them in front of me because it's more important for me to beat them, focus on them, than it was for me to find meaning in my life and hang out with the people that I say that I love, who are my why. So what is your number? That's number two. Your daily activity was number one. Get that in order. Number two, choose your number. What is your number? Figure that out. Once you know that number, then when you hit it, you can relax, you can rest, you can find meaning in the rest of the things that you do. Because you getting to that number, it's really not where the meaning is. What that is, is that is you being able to fuel the meaning. Yep. Money is just fuel. Money is fuel. Fuel for what you really want to be doing. Fuel for the people you really want to be doing it with. Those activities that you want to do, those interests that you have, a lot of them cost money. Some of them are free. But these days, if you just even want to go to Stone Mountain, you got to pay. Or Red Rock, I'm closer to now. (laughs) Another mountain now. But you got to pay something. 
just to even park. So you need money to do the things that you love. Number one, get your daily activity in line and that will help you manage your stress. Number two, know your number. Figure out what that target is, hit it, and then forget it. Now you can keep working, you can keep going, but you don't do that under stress. You do that with the knob turned down. And you wake up and say, what would I like to do today? Would I like to go and hang out with my son? Or would I like to go back into the office and have more meetings? You decide. Because you know your number and you hit it. And now CEOs, you can allow this to trickle down. Because I know it's going to piss you off when your workers are deciding to go play golf rather than come to work and get another dollar. But I guarantee you, if you allow them to do that, they will come back the next day more fueled, more ready, with more meaning, ready to kill it for you. Let them do what they need to do for them. Let them put themselves first and then they can put the company next. And if they put themselves first, they will give you their all. Get it? So this is about you, but this is about the culture you're creating in your company as well. Now, number three, this is where it gets a little complicated. (laughs) Number three, I'm going to ask you to work on healing your trauma so you can lead with vulnerability. So what I just said about allowing your employees to put themselves first, it's likely that there's some trauma behind you wanting them to put you first. Ego is trauma. And ego is in the way of vulnerability. Now I have this saying, relationships are not hard. Vulnerability is what's hard. Relationships are easy once you're vulnerable, once you find the courage, the trust to be vulnerable, then relationships are easy. Now take this relationship with your employees first. You have to build that trust in order to be vulnerable enough to allow them to put themselves first. Now, At some point, they're going to do it. You can make them want to put the company first. You can ask them to work 12-hour days, 16-hour days, 24-hour days. You can have them on call, but it will not serve you. It will not serve you. It will not serve your company. They will leave and you will lose. You hear me? They will leave and you will lose. I'm talking to my CEO who thinks that you control people. You control your employees because you do not. Now, there are times when I'm looking at (laughs) the to-do lists and the activities and the projects and I'm disseminating tasks and I'm putting on a team and I'm like, who's doing this and who's doing this and who's doing this? And I get really focused on all the tasks and projects and the things that need to get done. And, And I put a lot of pressure on the team and myself. And then when we're in a meeting, I'm laughing, I'm joking, and I'm like, hey, remember our culture, remind me, because we read, we started reading our culture, our vision, our mission, and who we are at the beginning of our meetings. And we do that because it's a reminder. So when I start disseminating tasks, I'm not like, and you better be in here 50, 60 hours a week working, and I better see some work happening in Asana and and in Dropbox and blah, 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 instead of going into that mode, because I'm very capable of that. It used to be like that. when I've, I've run my own company for a very, very long time. And in my 20s, that's how I was. I was the kind of CEO I was. And my mom brought it to my attention, and then I shifted. And this work that I've been putting together for you guys, this work that I teach you, Oh, I've been learning over a long, long time. And some of it came with some mistakes, some errors and hurting some people's feelings and hurting myself, thinking that I had it all figured out and that ego was in the way. And then I had to go into vulnerability and trust. And when I went into vulnerability and trust, it allowed me to see that finesse, not brawl or brute, finesse is how you get people to want to work long hours for you because they will but only allow them to do that when it's crucial, when it's important, when it's crisis, because if it's always a crisis, if they're always doing that, they will leave you and you will lose. So find some time to say, hey, work 30 hours this week. Now that is our, in our company, 30 hours is our full time, 30 hours. That's what I want you to work. That's what I want to work. Now for me, I might end up working more than that because I enjoy this work so much. I love it so much. There's so much meaning in the work that I do that I never really want to stop. I really want to keep going and I need accountability to stop. I have to put systems in place to make me stop. 
So I started, I recently started back playing tennis and it was so much fun that it actually can get me away from my work. And then the ladies that I play with are really cool too. And so just wanting to hang out with them pulled me away from my work. Now I have this other friend group too. And these ladies are sharp and gorgeous and smart and loving. And they're so much like me. Yes, I did just compliment myself. <laughs> you know how I do that sometimes. Forgive me. Anyways, I love these women. These women just, they up my game personally and professionally. Most of them are business owners as well. And so we just go at it. We go at it. We have fun. We do wellness things. We uh, we go to a brunch. We we go to the salt cave. I mean, we do great things together. And so that's easy enough to pull me away from my work. Now I have another friend. I have a male friend, Kobe, and I hang out with him. And sometimes we just go and chill at the coffee shop. Now you see my pictures at the cafes. I love cafes. It just, it, I don't know what it is, but it helps me reduce my stress to be at a cafe. I drink my Chai latte is what I usually have. Sometimes I try something new or if their chai latte has a lot of caffeine in it and it's the end of the day for me, I'll go to a herbal tea. Hibiscus is the one that I usually lean on. So you see how I get, I just lit up talking about these things. That's what you need to put into your life. And this is probably should have gone in number one, your daily activity, but it's part of your healing. Now, I had to heal from some of my trauma and some of my trauma was not wanting to be feminine because to me, femininity, that vulnerability of being feminine was what was getting women in trouble. It was like, oh, that femininity, oh, that damsel in distress, that weak woman. I saw being a woman as weak and I had to change that. And it wasn't any sexual trauma. It wasn't anything like that. It really was because I knew that there were women out there who wanted to be CEOs, who wanted to run companies, who wanted to start fashion lines and be presidents and do things, but they couldn't do it because they got married and had kids. And so I saw getting married and having kids as like a death sentence. And I told my mom when I was 18 years old, I was like, she said, what do you want for your 18th birthday? And I said, I want my tubes tied because I don't want to have children. And oh my gosh, she gave me a lecture of my life. And I told her, I have no intentions of being a mother. Now, I'd love to be a grandmother, but I don't want to be a mother. Because what I saw, grandmothers, grandmothers were retired. They were living their lives. They were loving it. They were all hanging out with their grandchildren. They weren't stressed out. They were happy. So to me, what I saw, mothers were stressed out. Grandmothers were happy. Fathers were stressed out. Grandfathers were happy. So in my mind, I just wanted to be a grandmother. I didn't know how the heck I was going to do it. Now, the universe blessed me and I was able to adopt. So I never actually had to have a child. Um, and my daughter came to me when she was 16 years old and she later got married just a couple years ago, got married and had a son. And now she has another on the way. So I'll be a grandmother twice. And so I actually got what I asked for, but I also needed to heal that pain that was associated with the misconception of what I thought it was to be a mother. So I healed that and I was able to be vulnerable in so many ways now, more feminine. And that's why the girls that I hang out with, they are so ladylike and so feminine. Uh, and, I, and I love being around them because they bring that out of me. Now I have my guy friends too, who bring that out of me. You hear me talk about Chavez, um, where I get to be hard ass and we talk stuff about each other, but in a gentle way, like we're not playing the dozens in a way where we're really digging deep and hurting each other's vulnerable, vulnerable spots. No, we're not doing that, but we are joking with each other. Like once Chavez barbecued in the house. Yeah. He had this hibachi grill and he barbecued in the house. I might even tell this story at the funeral this weekend. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, um, because the, the death in the family is related to my French vest. So he, we talk about that dumb move that he made by barbecuing in the house. And my brother, who was younger than us, he came in and he was like, man, I don't think you're supposed to be barbecuing in the house. And so me and Chavez joke about how, how dumb he had to be to barbecue in the house. If even Yasin, who was younger, knew not to do that. So, 
So, you know, I have my guy friends where we like jones on each other and play the dozens and like give each other crap. And then I have my girlfriends and we like do wellness stuff together. Well, I do wellness stuff with my guy friends too, because Kobe and Chavez are so into wellness. And so with the girl stuff, it's just a little different. And guys, you know, I know, you know, it's different when girls get together. And so when I get with my guy friends, I get to be um, more masculine and, and brawny. And when I get with my girlfriends, I get to be more feminine and, and easygoing and laid back and light. And so I say that because a lot of times we have to heal our trauma, our programming in order to get to that. So the first two you can do on your own. The third one, you may need some assistance doing that. The first one, Daily activity, you can listen to my videos. You can figure that out all on your own. You can listen to these podcasts. The second one where you're figuring out your number, you can do that on your own too. But if you want to have a private conversation with me, you can. This third one, healing your trauma, you'll need some help there. Don't try and do this on your own because there is a reason why you are working so hard. I call, you know, workaholism where you're working, working, working. There's a reason why all of that ego has you trying to control your employees and your family members. There is a reason why you're doing all those things that you're doing and you need to get to it. You've got to get down to it and heal your trauma, heal your programming. Now it doesn't have to be with me but it does have to get done. It really has to get done. You've got to change those triggers because those triggers are affecting you personally and professionally. Now, most of the time here, we're talking a lot about professional, but I want to even talk about you personally. You're snapping on your children. You're yelling at your spouse. And really what you want to do is love on them. But because you're not healed, you can't be vulnerable. Because sometimes you could just say, what you're saying right now is triggering me. It's upsetting me. Now, your spouse, the first time you say that, they're not going to be like, oh, honey, I'm so sorry. What would you like me to say? They're probably going to dig deeper at first. And it's going to mean you're really going to have to really breathe, really breathe. You got to make sure you do two meditations that day <laughs> because you're going to have to be at your best in order to stay in this vulnerable space. And when they see that you're serious, that you're really being vulnerable, then they're going to go vulnerable. Now, it's not going to be wave your magic wand and it's going to happen real easy. But if it's not happening, then you really need to talk to a neutral third party. Maybe there's marriage counseling. Maybe there's hypnotherapy for you. Maybe there is presidential experience. If you're not already in the club, get in there. Get in here, right? If you are wanting to manage your stress and enjoy your success, we want to help you do that. So let's recap. Number one, your daily activity. But uh, as a bonus, I guess, I reminded you that you need to be getting sleep. You need to be having nutritious food and you need to have some physical activity. So one of the things you're going to do in your, your field work after listening to this is rate your sleep, your nutrition, and your physical activity. And then go to seelybydesign.com slash presidential if you need to up your nutrition, if you really need some minerals and vitamins in your life, go to SeelyByDesign.com. Oh, Seely is spelled C-I-L-I, SeelyByDesign.com slash presidential. And then once you rate your sleep, nutrition, and physical activity, actually go into the real number one, which is your daily activity. Like really look deep into your daily activity. What is your morning routine like? What is your afternoon routine? What is your evening routine like? If you don't have a routine, create one. Now you can do that by listening to this podcast again, seeing what I talked about and giving yourself some form of that. Or you can do that by um, listening to some of my other videos on YouTube. And then I want you to share this video. I'm sorry, this is a podcast. I want you to share. So I want you to share this podcast with someone you love or someone who can hold you accountable. And you guys talk about your daily activity with each other. So that's part of your field work too. Share this, share this podcast, have a discussion with the person you shared it with and create your daily activity activity together, your morning, afternoon, and evening routines. From there, you want to go to knowing your numbers. And knowing your numbers 
super important because that is what's going to help you to pause and have a presidential pause. Now, it doesn't say stop. It just means that you have choices now. Now that you hit your number, okay, I have one friend whose bills are $100,000 a month, right? So let's say he he has that he needs to make $150,000 a month and then he can pause. I don't know his numbers. I'm just guessing. So when once he hits $150,000 in a month, he's earn that amount of money. Not that he's living check to check because he's not, um, but he does have to keep in mind that every month he still needs to make this. So he is never living check to check. So let's say his number is 150. He did his 150 and now he can decide to hang out with his girls, hang out with his ex-wife because he does hang out with his ex-wife. They're still friends. Um, Hang out with some of his colleagues, go to a concert, like do whatever it is he wants to do rather than continue to go to work. So think about that. What is your number? And then what are you going to do once you hit that number? Celebrate, enjoy. That's where you find the meaning in life. All of this is going to help you reduce your stress. And I know what you're saying. You're like, this is a lot, Kene. It is. But so is the stress. The stress is a lot. So if you're not doing these things and all that stuff that's stressing you is going to take over your life. Now, remember all the way in the beginning when I had you visualize that knob? Okay, do that again right now. If if any of this has upset you or caused you any stress or just feels just too daunting, just turn down that knob. See it turning down, starting at 100, going down, 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 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 9. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Breathe. Yeah. See, just like that. So try that exercise as well. You got to try it early enough so that you, when the stress first starts, not when you get on 10 stress. So you got to try it as soon as you feel your stress starting in order for it to really work. All right. Or you may have to do it several times a day. So you got your, your daily activity down and you're getting your numbers down and you're figuring that number out for yourself. And then here's the big one. Now those two, you can do on your own. And then this third one, you may need some help with, but you're going to look at healing your trauma. And the first way you're going to do that is seeing where you're triggered. What triggers you? When do you get upset? When do your employees upset you? When do, when does your spouse upset you? When do your children upset you? When do you upset yourself? When are you downing yourself? When are you talking negative to yourself? Notice all of this. Because this is what's going to help you manage your stress. So you can enjoy your success, remember, because that's the next part of this. So I talked a lot about managing your stress, but enjoying your success. Let's go there before we wrap up. So what it's not. Finding meaning in life or creating a life of meaning is not about what you have. It's not about your bank account. It's not even about what you do. So stop focusing on that. Focusing on, focus in on who you are. Who are you? I don't mean no. I don't mean you're a mother or father or you're, you're a, um, attorney. That's not who you are. That's what you do. So who are you? So let me, let me tell you who I am. <laughs> so I know, you know, my, I am Kanae Corder, national certified counselor, clinical hypnotherapist, you know, that stuff, but here's also who I am. I am the person that when you come and sit down with me, you're going to feel better afterwards. When you leave, even if we only spend five minutes together, two minutes together, you're going to feel better afterwards. That is who I am. I am the person that makes people feel better. I'm the person that helps people discover their gifts. That's my gift. I am the person who on the worst day, I'm only going to be unhappy for a few minutes. I will not let anything bring me down. I just won't. I can't. It's not fair. I won't do it to myself or God. So incredibly grateful. And let me tell you who else I am. I am so freaking forgiving. I'm really forgiving because I'm forgetful. I forget that I'm even mad at you. So most people know 
I can always go back to Kine. Now, I don't, you don't want to cross me though. You do not want to cross me because although I will forgive you, doesn't mean you get that, the, you get to sit next to Kime. <laughs> no, ma'am, no, sir. There are people in my life who have hurt me and they're not here anymore. But if I saw them on the street, would I say, hello, hey, how are you? How's it going? Yes, absolutely. I would. I would give them a hug even. But they don't get to hang out with me. They don't get this Kine energy. So I just refer to myself in third person like a lot right there. So please forgive that. <laughs> not that was not ego. That was more like <coughs> that was not ego. That was more like explanation. So you can get me. <laughs> so who are you? Who are you? That's the last part of our field work. Go ahead and think about that. And if you need some help getting there, let's talk. That is our show for today, guys. It really is. And right now I'm working on creating a life of meaning. And I want you to go with me. I feel like I'm so close. Like I'm so close. But there's still so much more work to do. So share this episode with someone you love. Someone who's looking for meaning in life. Because it is. My life has more meaning when I help others to have more meaning in their life. I can create a life of meaning by helping you create a life of meaning. So could you help me do that? <laughs> I'm here with you. I thank you for being here with me. And an incredibly warm, powerful thank you to the members of the Presidential Experience Club, Private Club. You mean so freaking much to me. You have no idea. All right, guys. Did you see how I just turned my stress down? <laughs> no stress here. I'm not even excited right now. I am like mellow. So get there. Go there with me. All right. I'll see you sooner. Hey, I'm wondering, do you feel like it's time to manage your stress so you can enjoy your success? Have you gotten to the point where you'd rather be appreciated for who you are rather than what you do? Well, if finding meaning in life is a high priority for you right now, and you're interested in seeing if you're a good fit for working with me and my team over here at Presidential Lifestyle, here's what I want you to do. Head on over to presidentiallifestyle.com slash private dash conversation to book a private conversation with me. So we can determine what's stopping you from creating that meaningful life. You'll get on the phone with me for about 60 minutes to get to the bottom of what's stressing you right now. We'll also take a look at what you want to create, like how much money do you want to have? How healthy do you want to be? How much love do you want to give and receive? What will happen is we'll take a closer look at where you are right now, as well as where you want to be. And if me and my team can help you bridge the gap between those two, we'll show you the fastest way. We help CEOs and high achievers all over the world navigate through stress so they can enjoy their success and turn their money into meaning. So to see if we can help you do that same thing, head on over to presidentiallifestyle.com slash private dash conversation or simply click the link in the show notes. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, thanks for listening. Want to reduce your stress even more? Here are four ways you can do it. One, send us your questions. Ask us anything about money, marriage, or maturing. You can send it to podcast at presidentiallifestyle.com Number two, subscribe to this podcast. You wouldn't want to miss an episode. That would be stressful. <laughs> and number three, get our Prosperity Report Recap. It's a free resource where we share top tools and resources. Just go to presidentiallifestyle.com slash blog slash prosperity report. Don't worry, it's in the show notes. You won't have to remember that. 
And four, if you really want to connect with us in a deep and powerful way, join our private club. Go to joinpresidentialexperience.com to find out when our doors open again. We want you to be there so you can turn your money into meaning. And if you're enjoying this podcast, go ahead and leave us a rating and a comment, and we'll be sure to thank you. And now for the legalese. Remember, this podcast is not to replace professional counsel. The best advice comes from a professional you know. The topics discussed in this podcast are general in nature and are for informational and entertainment purposes only. We encourage you to meet with a professional that you can discuss your specific situation with, whether therapeutic or otherwise. That's all for now. I'll see you next episode. And remember, you can have wealth in all of its forms. Believe it and you will soon see it.